take it. And I like to dip it in water because it makes it easier to roll. Since I already have a piece started here, I'm just going to continue on with it. So I'm going to take and split this in half again. Rewet this. wet my pant leg. If you do this on bare skin it's a lot easier and you uh, all you have to really do is wet your hand but uh, if I'm doing it on my pants I found if I wet my pant leg it's uh, just a lot easier. A lot easier to do it. And like I showed you before, you should have one end that is longer than the other. So you maintain the strength of the cordage. And I go in about three or, three or four or five inches. And just twist it in the direction that I was leg rolling it to get it started. And I, I usually back up a couple turns. Wet my hand that I'm doing the leg rolling with. And the real trick here is to keep the two strands separate with your thumb and forefinger while you're rolling it. Press down and roll it and let go. And then just roll it again to tighten that up. Pinch it again, bring it back roll it and let go and twist. Pinch it, roll it, let go, twist. And that's it. So there we got our one other piece added in. Now we're going to add in another piece because we're to the end of this one. And uh, I'm not real particular about the diameter, but the, the better you separate these strands and, uh, and crisscross them like I showed you earlier to get the, the, the amount of strands even on both ends, the more consistent the diameter of your cords will be. I mean, here you can see I had real nice consistency until I added in that next piece, which was a little thicker and now my cordage is a little thicker. And if you add two thin pieces together, then it'll be a little thinner and it might get a little weak on you. But uh, I found that for what I use this for, I don't have to be too particular about that. Twist, let go, and roll pinch, twist, let go, and roll. This long end will start twisting up on you, you just have to kind of keep separating it. Twist, let go, and roll.
twist, let go, and all. It's a lot easier doing it without, with a bare pant, with a bare leg, um, because you don't have these folds to interfere with you. Twist, let go, and roll. If you get a situation like, like that where one side didn't twist, just go ahead and give that side a little extra twist. Bring it back. And run them both down again. Let go and roll. Pinch. Twist. And roll. Pinch. twist, let go, and roll. <clears throat> now I'm down to the end again, where I have two uneven pieces, and I can go ahead and add in another piece of cordage, or another section of fiber. And you can see, in a short time, I've already got about two and a half to three feet of cordage and that didn't take I guess I'll have to go back and look at the video to see how long it took but just sitting here it didn't seem like it was more than maybe 15 20 minutes maybe a half hour at the very most and that's starting from scratch uh, so I mean even if it took you a half hour for three feet uh, you could do six feet an hour so in four hours you could have 24 feet and that's like a worst case scenario uh, once you get good at this and once you get going you can really crank this out I mean you can do a foot in uh, in under a minute probably once you get the hang of it once you get the hang of scraping the chaff separating the fiber from the wood and uh, twisting it up it really does go quite quick and then once you get a nice long length finished you can just go ahead and do like I said and just kind of give it a good twist like this probably can't see it in the film and just kind of pull on it and if you do that as you go it'll make it better too once you get a foot, you know, just kind of stop and twist up what you've already made. Give it another good tight twist and just kind of give it a good pull and let go. And that'll kind of set the twist into it. But you can see, since I'm kind of just uh, rushing through this and I'm not being too particular, I have uh, what I like a good thickness here, which is just about an eighth of an inch. And then where I bound in that new thick piece, it increased the thickness quite a bit, uh, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. And then when I bound in the next piece, it got kind of thin. But even at this thickness, I mean, this is the thinnest my cordage is right here. And if I double wrap this in both hands, and I pull, Oh, I cannot possibly break it. No freaking way, no how. Ooh. It's strong. It's way over 50 pound test. It's probably more like a 150 pound test. Um, I took the stuff I made last year and I tried to pull down on it with my weight because it's so thin. Uh, you can't really put all your weight on it in your hand because it'll just cut right into your hand so I couldn't really 
put the full weight of my body on it, but I could not break it. I tried a lot of different things. I had uh, I had the whole 13, 15 foot length. I had my brother stand at one end and wrap it around both hands, and I stood at the other end and wrapped it around both hands, and we played tug of war and we could not break it. So it's like pretty heavy duty. I mean, I can't break it. And I did the same thing with the uh, common milkweed. And common milkweed is really tough, but you can break it uh, if you try hard enough. And I've tried a few other cordages. I can't think of what they are offhand, and they all uh, they all broke much easier than the dog bane. Uh, the dog bane is just like. I don't know, I think it is probably the best cordage material there is. And uh, it's throughout North America. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know how far north it grows or how far south it grows, but I have looked at distribution maps and it's throughout North America. So it's likely that if you look around, you can find some and uh, it likes water. So if you find a stream, that's a real good place to look. Uh, it will grow around swamp and pond edges too, or drainage ditches along roads, uh, old culverts, uh, just anything where there might be a little extra water and a somewhat open area. Because it does do best in an open area, it will get taller like this stuff here. I mean, these stalks are probably three and a half to four feet long and I gathered them beside the road. Uh, there was no creek or anything by, but it is a low area, so there's a pretty high water table. So it had a good chance to take off, and it's a humongous stand of dog bane, and it grows extra tall. So just look around, and I'm sure you'll find some growing somewhere, and uh, give it a try. Just wait till, uh, Wait till the frost has hit, or wait till it has died back before you harvest it because you don't want the sap to still be in there. And uh, I guess that's it. I'm going to go ahead and make up probably about 20 feet of this. I've already got three feet here, and I used uh, two stalks to make three feet. And I have a dozen stalks, so I should be able to get about 18, 20 feet.